Good morning, everyone, and welcome to What Is It Wednesday from the Barnes Museum in Southington, Connecticut. I'd like to thank everyone who was part of our Trivia Tuesday for the very first time yesterday. Uh, it was wonderful, and we didn't fool you at all with that close-up photograph. I think 100% of you got it right. You uh, guessed that it was a glove that was part of our picture yesterday. And um, again, you were 100% right. It was a glove. I'll be telling you all about that glove today. We are in Bradley Barnes's bedroom today uh, for What Is It Wednesday. And this is one of the 17 rooms that you'll be able to experience when you come for a tour. Remember that tours right now at the Barnes Museum are scheduled. So you can go online and book your tour in uh, 24 hours in advance of notice. If you're thinking of maybe a same day tour, if you have an afternoon free, just give us a call at the museum. And those bookings online can be done at thebarnesmuseum.org. Let's turn this around and give you a view of Bradley Barnes's bedroom. Now, this is Bradley right here, just about the time he came of age. He was born in 1883. And Bradley uh, lived here from 1910 until his death in 1973 when he died at the age of 90. Uh, his grandfather had built this home and he inherited it after his grandfather passed away in 1906. Bradley did spend almost every single day of his 90 years here, however. Uh, he loved to come and visit his grandparents while they were still alive, and he had many toys and memories of this home. You can see that through that back door is a one of the bathrooms that we have in the house. And one of the many radios you will see right on that table right there. Bradley was obsessed with technology, gadgetry, and transportation, which is what we'll be talking about today. So that radio is one of many radios in this room. But let's give you a peek at that close-up glove we showed you yesterday. These are, in fact, Bradley Barnes's driving gloves. So what are driving gloves? Many of us are familiar with them today, these short little leather gloves uh, with some holes in them used to grip sports cars, a symbol of status today. Uh, however, driving gloves go back all the way to the very beginning of the automotive industry. If you think about what cars used to look like, cars were mostly uh, convertibles, right? <laughs> or they were open to the elements and the steering wheels, especially in the beginning, were made of metal. Uh, which would get very hot if, if they were exposed to the sunlight, which of course they were being open to the air. And then other steering wheels were also made of wood and the roads were a little bumpy. So to be able to really grip a steering wheel, driving gloves helped a lot. Most of them were made of leather. Now these in particular, these are just for, uh, mostly for fashion. These uh, are suede, they are not, um, sticky leather uh, like you see those driving gloves today and you'll notice the beautiful reflector on them that is what that gorgeous jewel is and this jewel is only on the left hand glove for those of us driving in the united states and not in england that is because the driver's side is on the left and before blinkers were invented this glove could be, your hand could be put out the window and you would signal when you were turning or coming to a stop. And uh, just like bicycle signals today. So those are Bradley Barnes's driving gloves. Gloves, great job guessing yesterday. Uh, I'm gonna have to come up with some harder photographs because like I said, I think 100% of you got that photo right yesterday, which is wonderful. Now, Bradley, again, he was obsessed with technology, gadgetry, transportation, and automobiles uh, were uh, the transportation for him. Um, Anna, that is just red glass. That's what that gemstone is made of. Great question. Uh, so here, I'll go back so you can take a peek at it. This is just regular red glass reflecting perfectly in the sunlight. Now, Bradley had many cars throughout his lifetime, but his favorite car was this automobile right here. This is Bradley's 1912 Pope Hartford Roadster. He did purchase this in 1912, and he had this until the day he died. 
So many people ask, is the car still here? And they ask that because this photograph that I'm showing you right now is a photograph of the car on the Barnes Museum grounds. However, and part of Bradley Barnes's will stated that this vehicle was to be brought up to the AAA office in West Hartford, which is where it sits today. So if any of you go up to the West Hartford AAA office and get your license renewed, right inside the glass vestibule as you walk in is this automobile. She's one of a kind, um, beautiful indigo blue, all the bells and whistles. The reason why Bradley willed this to AAA is because he was one of the charter members of the AAA Board of Directors. He was one of the ones that really uh, had a lot to do with AAA here in Connecticut. And here is a picture of Bradley on the side of the museum grounds in the car. We have many artifacts regarding our automobiles in the house. Uh, in sheer Barnes Museum fashion, they never got rid of anything. So if we had uh, correspondence with the company regarding any car parts or uh, regarding new vehicles that were coming in, they would absolutely keep all of that. We have catalogs, uh, we have receipts, and we have a lot of magazines. Uh, that have to do with cars and automobile fashion. And we have another pair of driving gloves. Now these are very early. Uh, these are gauntlet uh, gloves. And these um, are really what driving gloves started out looking like. Uh, before they became small, they all started off as gauntlet gloves. And for the most part. And some of them were lined. And again, these were all for protection. Now we think of them really as fashion. Uh, they certainly do help uh, a lot of race car drivers and whatnot, but <laughs> these in the early years were very uh, utilitarian. They, they needed to be used to help you drive a car. So those are our gauntlet gloves. As we come around to Bradley Barnes's room, we'll see another form of transportation in a photograph right here. Now this house looks similar to the front of the Barnes Museum uh, before it went through its uh, several renovations over the years. However, this home no longer stands. This was Bradley Barnes's childhood home. And for those of you who are familiar with Southington, we have uh, a town green right in the center of town and historically in the summer we have a uh, music on the green and there's a trailer that sits right on uh, one of the streets on downtown on the downtown green and behind that music on the green trailer is a parking lot it's now a parking lot but before it was a parking lot this is what it looked like and these folks right here on the beautiful horse and carriage are the person taking this photograph is literally standing on the town green, almost right where the gazebo is right now, taking that photograph facing the parking lot. So if they were to turn around 180 degrees, they would see First Congregational Church. We also have one of our favorite items of the house this is Bradley Barnes's Scottish outfit. The family is of English descent. They came over to the uh, United States around the 1630s. Uh, however, in the late 1800s, it was quite fashionable for young children to dance the Highland Fling during Christmas pageants. And in 1890, that is exactly what Bradley Barnes did. He danced with a friend of his from town and her name was Nellie Curtis. And this is a photograph of Bradley in that outfit with his dance partner from 1890, Nellie. And as all good parents do, they kept the program with the children's name on it. And it says, December 18th, 1890, Nellie Curtis and Bradley Barnes, Highland Fling. So here's just a nice quick look in our, uh, with again one of the many rooms that we have in the house that you'll be able to come and experience for yourself now that we are open for tours remember tours are for people of four or less and i want to go back to again the driving gloves that we started with one of the reasons why i chose this for our first trivia tuesday is because this was the very first item that i ever saw from the barnes museum 
We have a program that's been run since the early 1980s called the What Is It program. <laughs> that's why this program exists today. And uh, the curator at the time, Barbara, would bring items to the elementary schools in town and she would get kids excited about history. And I remember her coming to my elementary school and she showed me these gloves, showed the entire class. And I thought these were the prettiest things I had ever seen. It certainly worked getting me excited about history. Uh, here we are a whole ton of decades later <laughs> getting to share these items with you the same way that Barbara shared them with me. So we hope that you come and experience the Barnes Museum for yourself. It is time to step inside and uh, enjoy this beautiful collection in person. Uh, we'll be able to play the Steinway piano for you live if you've been uh, tuning in to our Songs of the Steinway, which is now every Monday and Friday. We're going to continue with T Trivia Tuesday because all of you had such a great time with it. So I look forward to hopefully surprising you with a close-up photo next Tuesday and a little bit of history and information into the Barnes Museum collection. Thank you all so much and book your tour today. Enjoy the day.